Welcome to the binomial distribution. In this video, we're going to talk about what we call binomial probability, which leads to the binomial distribution. And we're going to make sure we look at a couple examples here where we explain, really deeply explain, how to calculate these binomial probabilities. All right, so let's just dive into an example. All right, so here's the example. Kylie's probability of making a free throw shot is 85%. You know, initially, it looks like any old probability question. We know that she has an 85% chance to make a free throw, 15% chance that she misses it. Now, we're also told that each shot is independent of the next, and it asks us to build a probability distribution for how many shots she can make if she's given eight attempts. Okay, so this is a great example of a random variable. We can allow X, capital letter X, the random variable, be the number of shots that she makes out of eight. And this would be discrete. Why? Because I can list all of the outcomes. If she's given eight attempts, she can make zero of them, one of them, two of them, three of them, four of them, five of them, six of them, seven of them, or she can make all eight. Can't make nine shots. She's only shooting eight of them. So this is discrete. All of those are whole numbers, and I could literally make a finite list of all of the outcomes. So again, first glance, this seems to be a pretty, pretty standard random variable problem where we have a discrete random variable. We're looking at the number of shots that she makes out of eight attempts. But this is actually a very special type of random variable. In fact, it's so special we give it its own name. It's a binomial random variable, which leads to binomial probabilities. Now, how do you recognize that you have one of these special situations? Well, it's actually kind of simple. Uh, by, the prefix by means two. I think everybody knows that. So when you are in a binomial situation, you must be given the probability of success and a set number of trials. So you got to be given two things. That's where it gets the name binomial from. So you have to be given the rate of success and in our particular case, that's the 85% chance to make a free throw. Now, with that comes free of charge, the 15% chance she misses. That's great. And we're also given a set number of trials. In this case, a set number of amount of time she's going to actually shoot the basketball. And that is eight. So again, we got to be given those two things. That's a nice kind of simple way to say, oh, I think this might be a binomial situation. But there are a couple rules. If these rules aren't all true, it might look like a binomial problem, but it's not. Okay, so the first rule is that each trial, each outcome of a trial is only allowed to be either success or fail. Either it happens or it doesn't. So in this case, we're going to call success making the shot, which we know is 85% chance. Failure is missing the shot, which is 15%. There can't be a third or fourth or fifth or a sixth outcome. There can only be two outcomes at the end. It happens or it doesn't. What you're looking for is what we call success. Sometimes what you're looking for is like not necessarily what, what a normal person would call successful, but regardless, it's what you're looking for versus what you're not looking for. So yes or no, success, fail. Pretty simple. Now, next rule is that the probability of success must stay the same. So in our particular problem, that's 85% chance of making a free throw. That value cannot change. It's not like, well, you know, on her third shot, she actually got a 90%. And on her fifth shot, she actually has a 10%. No, no, it's got to stay the same 85% chance the whole time. And the third rule is that each trial must be independent of the next, meaning what happens on her first shot, whether she makes it or misses it, cannot affect what happens second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth. Every shot is independent of the next. So in, in terms of basketball, everybody's heard of like a hot streak. Oh, he's heating up. He's more likely to make his next shot or her next shot. That cannot be true in this case because we need the probabilities or we need the events, the trials, to stay independent of the next. All right, so as long as you have two things given, probability of success and a set number of trials, and you meet these three rules, you're in a binomial situation. Now, if you don't meet these three rules, okay, you could still be a random variable. It's just not a binomial random variable. That's all. All right, so let's actually dive into building the probability distribution for this specific situation. All right, so we know that we can make a list of all the outcomes. Once again, the probability of success, we typically just call that P, is 85%. Um, and then the number of trials, we typically call N. In this case, that's N. Remember, you've got to be given those two things, why it's called the binomial model. Now, free of charge, we do get 1 minus P, which is the opposite of success, which we would consider failure. In this case, missing a shot is 15%. 
All right, so let's walk through, find the probabilities of each of these outcomes. All right, so making zero shots. Now, she's a pretty good free throw shooter, so this is actually probably going to be pretty unlikely. For her to shoot eight shots and miss them all should be unlikely because she's pretty good. 85% is not bad. So how are we going to calculate this probability? Well, we're going to say, okay, she needs to make none of them, right? She, she needs to have no successes, and she needs all of them to be failures. So she's got eight shots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and she needs all of them to miss. That's 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%, 15%. So we could shorten that up to 0.15 to the eighth. Every single shot is a miss. Now, some kids like to emphasize that there are no makes. You don't obviously need to do that because I hope everybody knows that anything raised to zero is one. But some kids like to actually see the 0.85 to the zero to emphasize that there are no makes, all eight misses. Don't necessarily need that though. And the other thing I want to emphasize here is there's only one way this can happen. Miss, 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 miss. There's no other way this can happen. So there's only one way that this can happen. So at the end of the day, I don't really need the one in front. I really don't need the 0.85 to the zero, but you get my point. So now I'm going to go to my, whoop, got to go to my calculator here, 0.85. Now I don't have to type in the raise to zero, but you know, whatever. Everybody should know that that's one times 0.15 raised to the eighth. All eight shots are missed. Now make sure you know how to read scientific notation. Because that's e to the negative seven, I'm going to move the decimal seven times to the left. That's going to produce six zeros and then a two, five, six. So the probability here, I'm going to have to actually run outside my chart. I'll, I'll write the answer outside the chart here. It's point zero, 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 two, five, six. So pretty unlikely for that to happen. In fact, if that did happen, I would be like, whoa, Kylie, are you worse than you told us? Maybe you were lying about that 85% because, you know, missing all of them, if you really are an 85% free throw shooter, should not happen. Very, very unlikely. All right, let's actually jump to the other end of the spectrum for a second, making all eight of them. So once again, we got eight shots. You can see I have my little circles here to represent my shots. And she's got to make all of them. 85%, 85%, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85. 85. So that would be 0.85 to the eighth. Every single one is a make. And again, some kids like to put the 0.15 to the zero. Not necessary, but I'm just emphasizing that all eight are makes. None of them are misses. And once again, there's only one way that this can happen. Make, 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 make. That's it. That's the only way this can happen. So once again, I'm going to go to my calculator here. 0.85 raised to the eighth. I don't need to put the 0.15 to the zero because that's just one. You know, some kids like to do it anyway, but here we go. 0.272. Now, why is this way more likely than missing them all? Because she's a pretty good free throw shooter. She makes 85% of her shots. So if you think about it, like she should make a lot of them. So it wouldn't be that weird for her to make all eight. All right. Now let's come down here to one free throw. Just, just one free throw. Okay. So that means of all of the t um, eight shots, I need one of them to be successful. So I need one success, 0.85. And I need the other seven to all be misses. Okay, m makes complete sense, right? I mean, how easy is that? One make, seven misses. Simple. But here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Which one is the miss? See, when we were talking about no makes, all misses, there's only one way that can happen. Miss, 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 miss. But when we want one of them to be a make, which one? Like this one could be the make. All the others could be misses. Or... This one could be the make. All the others could be misses. Or this one could be the make. All the other ones be the misses. All right, so how many different ways are there? Well, this one's actually pretty simple to do in your head. There's eight attempts. Any one of those eight attempts could be the make. So there's eight options here. But for some kids, that's a little bit hard to see. So there is a pretty cool way that our calculator can confirm that there are eight ways of doing this. All right, it's, it's, it's kind of a new notation, but I want to walk you through it real quick here. So this new notation looks like this. Okay, so it's called combinations. Maybe you've heard of combinations back in, I don't know, um, you know, middle school or I don't know, geometry class, something like that. But basically we want to talk about combinations. So we have eight shots and we're looking at how many different combinations are there where we make one of them? 
Now this notation is kind of weird. On your calculator, it's actually gonna look like this. Eight choose, or how many combinations are there, where one of those eights is a make. Now there is a mathematical process that does some math to figure that out. But to be honest, I'll show you that at the end here. But I just want you to focus on our calculator could do it for us. How do we do this on our calculator? Well, you actually type the eight in first. That's the end, that's your total number of attempts. Then we're gonna hit the math button on the far left, slide over to the PRB, that stands for probability, and we're gonna go down to the NCR option three here, that stands for combinations. So notice that it fills in the eight, it kind of makes a subscript here with the N, and then we're gonna type in the one. So this is our calculator telling us if you got eight attempts, how many different ways, how many different combinations can one of them be successful, and boom, it tells us eight. Now, if you have an older calculator that hasn't been updated, it doesn't make the eight in the one subscript. It just kind of puts the eight out in front of the C and the one in the back of the C. Don't worry about it. Hit enter. You should still get eight. So that's how I know that there are eight different ways that this could happen. Now I got to go to my calculator to get the answer here. So I'm going to take the eight options. All of them have the same probability because all eight options have one success and seven failures. Every one of them have that, but they are different because it's a different one that creates the make. So we, what did I, oh, I typed in 115, uh, not 0.15. Oh my gosh. So sorry about that. But again, I was working like, that's not a probability. I should definitely have a decimal in there. So uh, there we go. Okay, so our probability, again, remember, make sure you know how to do scientific notation. I'm going to move that decimal five times, creating four zeros and then a 116. So my ending probability is here is 0.0000116. So pretty unlikely as well. All right, let's move on to two shots. Hopefully as we start to get a better grip of this, we'll see how easy this is. We need two shots to be a make and that would leave six shots to be a miss. So of the eight shots, two are makes, six are misses, 0 0.85 to the second, 0.15 to the six. But which two? It could be any two. It could be this one and this one. That's one option. Whoop, hold on a second. And again, it could be even like, uh, you know, this could be the make and this could be the make. So how many different combinations are there? That's what we're gonna go ahead and do our eight choose two. So once again, we we'll go to the calculator, type in the eight first, math, slide over to PRB, go down to option three here, and I'm gonna, do, it already put the eight in first, so I gotta do the eight first, then type in two, and this can tell me how many different combinations there are, eight shots, two makes, 28 different combinations. Holy cow, that's a lot. So that's the number that goes in front. Now again, every one of those 28 combinations where you have two makes and six misses, it has the same probability because there's, you know, multiplication doesn't matter when it comes to order or order doesn't matter when it comes to multiplication. So 0.85 to the second, there's two of those, 0.15 to the six, but there's 28 different options of that. So now I'm going to go to my calculator to figure that out. 28 times 0.85 to the second. And times 0.15 to the six. Make sure I typed it in right. And we get, okay, once again, move that decimal. I'm gonna move that decimal four times to the left. That's gonna be 0.00023. Again, also pretty unlikely. Why? She's a pretty good free throw shooter. All right, let's see if we could speed up a little bit here to get through these other ones. So this would be 0.85 to the third, three makes, 0.15 to the fifth, three makes, five misses, eight total shots. But how many different ways can it happen? Which three shots? Any combination of three shots is going to make it. So once again, we're going to go to our calculator here. Eight, slide over to math. Now, on real quick, another cool thing you could, well, I'll show you that in a second, I guess. So eight. Then we're going to go to math, slide over to probability, option three, and we're going to do three makes, and we get 56. 56 different options here, so I need a 56 out in front of this. 56 different options where there's three makes. All right, so 56 times 0.85 raised to the third, times 0.15 raised to the third. Whoa, excuse me, oh my gosh. Five, <laughs> three makes, five misses. And we get 0 0.00261. Okay, hopefully you're getting the point. I'm actually going to pause my video, but then it's, it's gonna, in just like one second, it's gonna instantly pop up the other ones. So um, hopefully you understand where I'm gonna get all these values from. I'm just trying to speed the process up here for you a second. And voila, the rest of the chart is filled in. 
So first off, again, look at each option. Like for example, look at the one I did here for six. So I have six makes, 0 0.85 to six. Got to have six 85%. That means the other two shots got to be misses, 0 0.15 to the second. Then I figured out, again, I went to my calculator, eight combination six. How many different combinations are there with eight? Choosing six of them to be makes, got 28. And then again, I went to my calculator, typed all of that in, 28 times 0.85 to six times 0.15 squared to get the 0.238. Nice and simple. Now, a couple things to just kind of notice here. Notice that there's some symmetry in terms of the combinations. The top and the bottom are both 1, then both 8, then both 28, then both 56, then both 70. You're definitely going to always see some symmetry there. And the other thing, too, is that all of the probabilities when you're done need to add up to 1. So it's kind of a nice way you can actually check yourself, add all those up. Now, because we rounded every one of those just a smidgen, they might not add up to exactly 1, but should be really, 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 really close. But that is what we consider a binomial distribution. The idea is that we got a given probability of success and a given number of trials, in this case, 85% and 8. And then we could build the discrete random variable distribution, writing down all of the possible outcomes for how many that she can make. And then find the probabilities. Hopefully, after watching this video, is quite easy. Now, I do want to show you, um, it could be a little bit confusing, but I'll explain it. Um, a generic formula for doing this. Now, everything I just did here was very specific with a probability of success of 85%, probability of failure of 15%, and eight total trials. So here is um, the binomial function in terms of more of a like um, generic form, right? So on the left-hand side here, we see the probability of what you're looking for. So I'm looking for the probability that there's going to be three makes, or I'm looking for the probability there's going to be four makes, right? So X is the, you know, the random variable X is the total random variable of how many makes could she have, and little X is the specific outcome we're looking for, whether it be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. Then we have right here the probability of success raised to the number of successes we want. Hey, we're looking for three successes. We're going to take that 0.85 raised to the third. Back here, we have the failure. So we have one minus P. That's just the failure rate raised to the N minus X. So, if, you know, in our example, we had eight trials. And if I'm looking for three successes, eight minus three would lead me with five failures. So, you know, in a, in a simple way, this value represents the number of successes you have. This number represents the number of failures you have. And then this front part is that notation I was telling you earlier about combinations. N is always going to stay 8 in, in our particular problem. It's how many total successes you have. And then the X is what you're looking for, how, how many specific you're looking for. And remember, on your calculator, it doesn't use those giant parentheses. That's like the notation for it that we put down on paper. But our calculator, it's going to actually look like this, NC. Our calculator actually uses R, but it's NCX or NCR, you know, with the same thing. So that's kind of a generic form for how this is going to go. But obviously, in a specific problem, you're just filling all those values in like we just did a moment ago in that table. Now, if you're wondering, what is the calculator doing to figure out this N choose X? Here it is right here. Do not worry about doing this, right? But your calculator is taking N factorial divided by X factorial times N minus X factorial. And if you're like, what's a factorial? Listen, that could be a different video. That could be a different topic. Your calculator is going to do the heavy lifting for you. You just need to understand that N is the number of trials. X is how many successes you want. And this is going to tell you how many different combinations there could be. And this is how we're going to do it on our calculator. If you were like, oh, wow, I love factorials. I love those explanation points. I want to do this all by myself. Great. Knock yourself out. Do it. It's going to be a little bit more time consuming, but you can do it. What I would rather you focus on is let the calculator do that heavy lifting and you just worry about getting that probability. But that's an example of a binomial distribution. I can't emphasize the setup for the scenario. You must be given a success and a set number of trials, and then you must meet those three rules. All right, hopefully that was a pretty quick, painless, nice explanation for how to work with binomial distributions and binomial probabilities.